exercise 12, Creo, parametric 8.0. In this exercise, we're going to take a look at the functionality of importing legacy data from perhaps a, an old 2D CAD system. In this case, we're going to bring in this DWG file, and we're going to see how the 2D DWG file can be converted to a 3D model like you see here. And so let's begin. First, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go to Britannia1.com and under the Creo 7.8, you're going to locate down below here, Exercise 12. You're going to click on that and proceed to download it. When it gets downloaded, just uh, make sure it's going to be in your downloads directory. Maybe move it to desktop from uh, Windows Explorer, just so it's a little easier to find for you. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and begin. I'm going to go to New. Uh, actually, I'm sorry. I'm going to go to Open. And I already have it in a Creo folder that I created. And over here on Types, the Creo Files, select All Files on the filter. And you should be able to see the Exercise 12 DWG. Select Import. And now Import New Model information should appear. We don't want it in a drawing. We want it in a part file. We want to turn on Use Template, otherwise it won't give you the planes. It's a sketch on, you have to create them yourself, which isn't a bad thing, it just takes time. And then here we could give it a name. So we're, I'm going to go ahead and name it E12 and hit OK. Let me shrink this down so it fits my screen here. OK, and so it comes up looking like this. Now, what we're looking at doing is there's strategies when converting drawings. Like, for example, it might be hard to see this, but we could actually go to the Options menu and under Environment, uh, I'm sorry, under um, System Appearance, System Colors, we could go with um, Dark and hit OK. And it might be easier to see. Now, actually, it reverses it a little bit. And this is what I was looking for. This is a section view. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring this in. Now, another thing you could do, you could bring it into a drawing. If you recall just a moment ago when I was importing it or opening it, it said to bring it into a drawing. If you bring it into a drawing, it will bring up the dimensions. And so that way you could actually have a drawing copy and read the dimensions off of it while you're putting this in. Because there's times where you will get a drawing and if the scale's different or else uh, back in the day, I, mean, I was using some of the old CAD systems in the 80s, and you, the line length didn't necessarily rep wasn't representative of the actual dimension that was showing sometimes. It was little cheats that you would do back then because CAD was just 2D and it was just sketching things. So be aware of that. But anyhow, we're pretty safe with this one. So let's continue on. First of all, we're going to go ahead and select the front plane. And from the quick launch, we're going to select Revolve because our strategy is to take this and revolve it. Now there's an upper and a lower half of the section. Now the, the cross section here shows a big gap. We don't want that. Otherwise, we'll have two separate rings once we revolve this. So our best bet is to steal this information here and utilize that. Now what we're going to do, first of all, draw your center line. Go to the center line tool. And right at this point, let it snap and make sure it goes horizontal. Click and then middle click on your wheel to release that tool. Now we're going to steal this information. The way we could do that is through project. Select project, and you'll get this little box that appears to the right, and you have single chain and loop. I just go with loop, even though it doesn't work on this one. Sometimes it does, and you just have to go through and select the little entities. And usually if you go with loop or chain, the intent is it's supposed to automatically wrap around, and it might be because of the precision of this drawing that it might not be doing that right now. So, but I'm not sure of that. It could just be operator error. So I'm just selecting these, even the little segments. And you'll see wherever there's red, that means there's an opening, those little red squares. But once we've got it closed, it should shade for us. And so you can see the shade in there now. And once that's shaded, that means you've got a watertight boundary condition. And that was our goal we need in order to create a solid. So if it doesn't shade, Go back and just look at all the little entities. Now, be careful. You could double click on these and you could really do, you could actually add geometry a second time and then it 
causes even more trouble. So you want a clean bunch of geometry there. Okay, now I can just hit OK, and it should automatically just rotate around that axis that I created. So I'm going to hit OK. I want it to revolve 365 degrees. That looks good. Now we want to steal some inf information off of this one here. I'm going to go back to the options and under the system appearance and change it back to light. Okay. From here, we're going to steal this one right here. And that's probably the easiest one to steal. You could take the others, but uh, that's, that's probably the way to go. So I'm going to go ahead, first of all, on the orientation, I'm going to go to front. I'm going to select the front plane and just go to sketch. We're not going to extrude anything on this one. We're going to steal this information off of this, though. And to do that, we use the project tool again. And you can do single chain or loop. I'll just do single this time because there's only a couple here that we need. So you select these entities. Once it turns to that shaded color, you're in good shape. You can hit close. And now I'm going to go ahead and middle click one time on my wheel just to make sure I don't have anything open. And now we're going to select that geometry like so. Just click and drag a fence around it. And we could go up here to copy or control C. Hit OK. And now let's zoom out. Now what we want to do, we could actually drop it on this plane, which is in, in the direction we would like to have it drop. So let's go ahead and select this. And we can go ahead and start a sketch. And now go to paste up here and click right out here and it will appear. Now it's the scale for some reason. I don't know why it always comes up with the scale. Maybe there's a setting I'm unaware of where you can always have it go to one, but we want to change that to one. Hit enter on your keyboard. Now, see this little circle with the cross in it? Hold your mouse over it and right, it's right mouse button click and drag now to the center point that's down below here. And that center point is the center point of this arc that we have. Now, once you release it, it should snap. And now this is where it's really neat. You just hover over that center point again. And now with just your regular mouse button, your left, drag, hold and drag, and drag to the center point and release. And there it is. Now we could hit OK. And we have our geometry. But we could see there's red squares. Now, it, I'm not sure why sometimes the red squares appear, why they don't, but Here's what we're going to do. You can see it transformed into polylines. And again, there might be a setting somewhere to prevent that from happening. But I'm going to show you how I'm going to fix it. I'm going to uh, click and drag a fence to surround just that little bit of geometry up until that red square. See the red square down here? Anything else, leave out of the boundary. Release. Hit delete on your keyboard. Now go to the arc tool. And you want the three-point tangent end. Click. Click on this up here at this point, drag it to the left, and then down. Don't go directly down. That will give you a different type of circle. And then when you get to this point, go ahead and click. All right, now middle click again. And see, now the red square is gone. So we fix that. Let's fix this one now. So coming from left to right, if you go from right to left, it will accidentally select this segment there. We don't want that. So click over here. And I don't think I got everything. Let's try that again. Uh, actually, we could just do it from bottom up. There we go. And so we've got everything inside that little area. Hit delete. And now go back to arc. And go up here, click and drag to the right and then down. Click again, middle click. Now it's sealed. But I don't like this curve here. This, it's a spline, actually. So I'm going to replace it. Click on it, hit delete. And now let's go with another tangent arc. And from this point, click, drag it, and get it to snap to this point. When you get the little dots up here, click, middle click. And now we have a watertight boundary condition. No red. Let's hit OK, and it should immediately start to, uh, we could go to extrude. And we want it to go through all. But 
we want to remove material and then hit OK. Now we're going to put in the chamfer. So let's go to the chamfer or chamfer tool, as some of you complain that I call chamfer, more SH versus CH. Um, and it should be 0.125. And let's go ahead and select this edge and this edge. Hit OK. Now you could control select the extrude above it. So both are selected. And we'll go underneath pattern and go to geometry pattern. And we want, instead of direction, we want axis, zoom out, select that center axis. And you'll see it will give us four instances. Go ahead and select five. And then here, let's type in 360 divided by five, which is the number of instances. It'll give us our degrees, 72 degrees. Hit the green check. And that's it. We've completed that part. And that concludes this exercise.